Last Pint Productions presents the New Way podcast. The New Way contains adult content, and new episodes are released most Wednesdays. So back off, man. We're professionals. Listener discretion is advised. So you were in Vietnam, if I'm not mistaken? Yeah. Were you in the shit? Yeah, I was in the shit. Last night, Darth Vader came down from Planet Vulcan and told me that if I didn't take Lorraine out, that he'd melt my brain. Here's how you get him. He pulls a knife, you pull a gun. He sends one of yours to the hospital, you send one of his to the morgue. We came, we saw, we kicked its ass. Everybody wants to be naked and famous. Everybody wants to be just like me and naked. Will you help teach me about this? What is it? A new way. Hello and welcome once again to the New Way Podcast, where we break down pop culture so you don't have to. I'm your host, Matt Shank. I am in the studio with Benny Scott. Hello. Hello, Benny. And we are joined via the Zoom by Mr. Nick Santa Croce. Hello, Matthew and Benjamin to you and yours. It's uh, it's it's just the three of us together again. It doesn't it, it, it happens in different ways this year, but I, I'm always just happy to be talking to both you gentlemen on the podcast it's the, it's the holidays it is the we're, holidays. we're together we're there this is and this I'm, is what holidays are about shit talking things on a podcast with three white guys matt nick i just like to say i'm so thankful for your friendship oh that's and nice. uh and <laughs> no no I was, I was thinking of a good Fuck. No. this is definitely <laughs> gonna go bad in a second couldn't think of an insult fast <laughs> enough well you, you get the whole episode buddy don't worry just chime in when you think of it it no. is it is funny i'm i'm uh so it's very sweet benny i love you too <laughs> uh, we love you benny um uh, for my beverage today but it's opposite day <laughs> sing <laughs> for... see that's how fast you gotta be well done well done nikki <laughs> nikki's showing Thank how you. it's how it works um I, i'm drinking today <laughs> I just put together like three of the shitty Bud Select, the the like two percent fifty calorie beers, in and I poured them all into this cup. So I feel like I'm at a sporting event because this is going to just get flatter and warmer throughout the podcast and taste terrible. So this is like my baseball game version. Why? Of, why, of why are you? I, I'm why only, are you doing that. I didn't want. I was trying to lower the calories for for the for the the beverages and this was the but, but, easiest but, but, way to do but, it so you you only had half of a Michelob ultra and half of a bud light and you made a mad scientist concoction out of it yes well, <laughs> I, 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 okay I, all right fair enough well I, I, if you didn't know why not just I, buy a case of low calorie beer and i drink did that i did but i wanted I'm, didn't want to have to be opening beers on the podcast because some of our listeners have oh, said there's yeah, an alarming the sound effect travel mug. so okay, i put I them i combined them into a larger mug I'm, I'm i'm pretty sure that you put it in a stanley though um so that means it's gonna be cold on like monday of next week <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so if, if their promises hold true, if their if their marketing campaign, it, it, it is holding its temperature it, as far as its carbonation. That went by by uh, about you, two seconds after I poured it in. There. I, I, I can say it's actually kind of alarming. I have one of those like um, like a Baltimore Ravens Brandon Stanley uh, like coffee cup, and I put like five pieces of ice in with my iced coffee in the morning. I can park in like Florida summer heat in the sun and I can come back to my car eight hours later and there's still ice in there. I have no idea how that fucking witchcraft works. You you have a you have a Raven Stanley? Yeah. The Ravens barely have a Stanley. <laughs> I hear he's been a real <laughs> liability on the real, offensive real, line. Real, real liability on the left side. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Also, and you know, can, I, can I also say that was a little, little football joke for? for uh, I man. see Ben with the, the the four pack of craft beer, but man, how the mighty have fallen! Poor Matt has two beers in the house, and they're both different brands of low calorie <laughs> beer. Listen, that's so listen, sad. Listen, I, my ta- my ta- I, what is funny though? Actually, my my tastes also have very much changed. Uh, this year that I am mm. I'm not chasing a lot of the the super hazy hoppy stuff. I'm really going back to where I like a good lager and like I like well, the hop the, the, the whole, hop hog whole, whole the, craft yeah. you're saying. I'm like I've I've transitioned back into kind of just more simpler kind of beers. Crispy boy. I, you're, you're, you're a crispy boy. You <laughs> Thank are. you. Uh, a I, boy. I, I also want to I also want to compliment Nick on the restraint he showed 
gearing up for that football joke because as soon as ben <laughs> said raven stanley nick's just you could see mm. it, it glowing and he's like nope you know what i'm gonna wait for everyone to say their and thing i'm gonna it's, and I'm it's gonna mostly because it and the funny thing is it's not the reasons you think it's because i really don't have not followed the team very much <laughs> the past five years but i knew about this one thing and i knew ben was gonna be really happy Aww. right right i named my cup ronnie so um, <laughs> <laughs> No, no, Just no. like that Ronnie says, that be my little Stanley. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, anyway, uh, we want to thank you for tuning in be to the new way. I was this is exactly what I was thinking. <laughs> I, I was hoping that's where you were going with that. <laughs> I don't get the football reference, but I get the oldies reference, so I appreciate it greatly. Uh, He's saying the left tackle for the Raymond sucks. <laughs> oh, well, 80 that- songs are oldies now? It's yeah, pretty yeah, much. Well, I, yeah. guess it, I guess you're right. It's 43 yeah. years ago was 1980. <laughs> so it's a long time. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's, I was speaking, of which I will be uh, as a, a in one month. I will be closer to 50 than I am to 40. I will be turning 45 on January 3rd. Wow, buddy. old, old, old man. Um, Are we going back to Key West? <laughs> no, that will be 50. We, I will do Key I'll, West I'll, again. Yeah, we, but you have to get you have to get naked on that hey, rooftop this time. Right? <laughs> well, I'll be old I, enough for it. Well, we I wasn't just, old enough last. We time. were discussing it before the podcast. I think mentally we might go back to Key West for a day. Yes, <laughs> yes, yeah. We will. Fi- we'll, we'll figure out that we and we will also uh, that weekend. Nikki will be in town, so we're going to try to put together one or more podcasts while he's here. Uh, we might try to squeeze in our our X Men Part Two podcast, which I'm really excited for. And and today my um. So uh, it was a Black Friday and Cyber Week recently. So that means for me, a large order placed on Tee Public uh, that I can then have come to my house at, at a greatly discounted price. And I decided, you know what? I did not represent well last time with the X Men apparel. I only had the hat. So I, I searched and I searched and I searched on the site to find the perfect shirt. And I found one. It was such a, a slam dunk for Matt. And then the timing of it arriving couldn't be worse because it is beast but he is in the fraser crane thing going i'm listening and if you followed anything with kelsey Grammer this week he was a little vocal about a lot of trump things so i like no i and i kind of forgotten that i ordered that one and i'm going through the shirts like oh great choices and i go oh jesus christ so i now have my fraser beast mashup shirt uh that i'm still gonna wear it but it i'm a little bummed that it's tarnished now man i mean I, you, you could say a lot of bad things about beast but if he's gone maga I, I can't uh can't be surprised after the current run yeah 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 and it's and it's, it's a not... real it's a real character assassination if you ask me. <laughs> and it's not like it's just a beast shirt and go it's not kelsey grammar like no no this is specifically the kelsey grammar beast it's the only way the t-shirt works so i'm screwed it's, it's there. like it's like it's it's like specifically buying a Jared Leto, Leto Joker shirt. <laughs> or a Jared from Subway shirt. <laughs> yeah, or, or any Jared. Well, I, I just imagine a great crossover there. <laughs> Jared Leto as Jared from Subway? Yeah. <laughs> In the Subway multiverse. <laughs> the- <laughs> That's your franchise. It's a franchise of a franchise. It's perfect. Which brings, brings us to the eventual topic, but you'll find yeah, out. Well, we're not, we're well, not done our, our initial... We're not done with preamble yet. But no. you'll, you'll, soon you'll understand just how perfect that segue was. Uh. Now, to throw that under the bus and keep talking intro. Go ahead. <laughs> um, no, I wanted, I know, Ben, you saw a, a movie that you were quite excited about, uh, uh, gave yeah. a, a fine review of. Do you want to talk about Saltburn? We talked about it on the vampire. Oh, podcast. that's right. We did talk about it. I couldn't, I forgot that you'd, you'd I didn't gotten talk there about yet. it. Uh, oh, I'll yeah. talk about it. Shit. Well, that doesn't work then. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, that takes off 10 minutes I had for that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I just I, I sure hope we didn't talk about the Marvels. Oh, accordingly. shit. <laughs> um, it happens, well, I did, I did prepare a game uh, uh, for you gentlemen, but if you, but if, I, I don't know what else you've got going on in your world that so you maybe want to be talking yeah, about. Yeah, Nick, we haven't, we haven't talked to you in a little yeah. bit. What, what's going on? After we broke the news what of you your... Mean? Hey, tell us what you're missing tonight. Oh, well, yeah. What are uh, you missing? I, I had the opportunity to uh, take in a movie film with uh, Snake Pilsen. Pliskin? And I, uh, Pilskin? Pliskin? Pliskin. Pilskin. <laughs> Pilskin. You could have seen Snape Pilsen <laughs> live? Snape? Yes, yes. <laughs> um, it's a, a very specific uh, 
How how is no brewery not made a pilsner called Snake Pilsen? Oh no! <laughs> that has to happen. That has, that to, has happen. to happen. I'm kind of happy maybe you didn't go. So you're like, uh, Mr. Pilsen. Uh, <laughs> I really loved your your role, as <laughs> Professor Snape Pilsen. In the <laughs> I didn't uh, say Snape. I didn't say Snape. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Kurt Russell. Kurt Russell and his son Wyatt are doing a Q and A. Screening of episode five of Monarch in Culver City. Uh, friends of the podcast, uh, Ben and Steph, uh, were so gracious enough to invite me. But, uh, you know, I I chose the pod. Uh, well, so if our roles were, were reversed, I... Old uh, Jack Burton. I definitely would have... Because uh, uh, I'm a huge fan of the show. So... Um, uh, I'm enjoying it. It's really good. I am good. enjoying it. It's really good. Yeah, um... You know, like monster movies are not Amanda's thing at all, and she's into it. Um, I'm really into it. It it does it does what like Walking Dead did really well in its heyday, which is in the first um, few seasons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's focusing on the the ripples of of the zombie apocalypse of the of the, of the breakout, the the people's relationships now living in a world where this exists now. Which is kind of the story of our lives every year. It's like now we live in a world where this happens, and we we it changes our social dynamic. And the next year, something horrible happens. Like, well, now this is the world. Yeah. Well, this you know that that's that's the the, the whole conceit of the show is that, that now everyone you know knows monsters are real and they live among us, <laughs> like like the Tim Robinson sketch predicted. Well- and you know what happens? <laughs> well, it's I, good. I, I mentioned it on the on the podcast uh, previously when I was saying how much I enjoy it. That 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 scene in the first episode where she has the panic attack, like the PTSD yeah. attack, yeah. Well, when when they had the drill, and you see what she experienced, I think that scene is one of the most effective like kaiju Godzilla scenes ever. Mm-hmm. And it's so well done and so well shot. And then and when you were like, oh. Oh, she went through shit. Like, yeah, not not like she experienced trauma, but she experienced so much tertiary trauma around her. <clears throat> I was like, wow, that's really like I, I I was like tearing up in that scene. I was like, oh, oh my god, like it's I can't good. I can't I mean, imagine. When you when you, when you th- those scenes get, are are usually ripe with tro- with it's just stuff you've seen a million times yeah, no, I, before that's the flashback you know but the way that was cut it felt a little more subtle it felt a little more genuine it felt it had the same feeling of like you're in a car accident at a stoplight and every time you're at a stoplight you look over your shoulder yeah you know? exactly it, 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 yeah. it captured it in a really really good way and i, I also like that they're really they're kind of they're kind of taking a page out of the jaws playbook um, this franchise has struggled. It's like, what do we do? do we lean in, um, like Pacific <clears throat> Rim or, or like you know, uh, Puff Daddy's Godzilla with Matthew Broderick and all the little Godzukis running around, or do we try to get gritty? <laughs> and they they were velociraptors, <laughs> you know, like like in, in the Cranston universe, you know, and, and like finding that balance is really tough. But I think, I think what the solution is 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 don't show the shark. You know, it's Cloverfield. Cloverfield as little did as it. possible. I mean, that's huh? what Cloverfield did. Yeah, exactly. You don't see shit for yeah. Cloverfield, and and I remember. But, I, the, but the problem, the problem with Cloverfield is that it was the Cloverfield monster. It was a new monster, and part of the yeah. allure was you didn't really know what it looked like. Here, this is a established, yeah. well established, well, it- well loved character that is now also in another competing movie at the same time from different filmmakers and a different vision. So I honestly think it's quite a a feat. To feel like you're getting, you're re- actually getting Godzilla, yeah, and not a knockoff or you know. But at the same time, and, and, and uh, it feels different. And there's few shots where they do show Godzilla, and they're just great money shots. I mean, it's yeah. like it's like oh, they literally show Godzilla for one shot in almost like every episode, and it's like uh, always oh, and it's a well designed shot. Like it's very intentional. Yeah, it's very intentional. Uh, yeah. I'm like, oh well, well, here's going to be that's the shot we're spending all the money on, <laughs> you know, and uh, and we and know I'm okay it. with I'm okay now, with that to save your money and, for your one thing in your in your episode. 
and 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 this is not the last She Hulk reference of of the day. Uh, so <laughs> mm. so brace yourself. But like, uh, you could tell that it's a, a different approach than that, which is they filmed a ton of stuff, would sometimes even animate a scene halfway and then scrap it because it wasn't working. Here, you knew they had this storyboarded. They knew exactly what shots yeah, they needed immaculate. to send to the post house, and they weren't paying a dime over <laughs> yeah. what they planned for. And it, 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 that approach, you know, is working for this and, big time. And, and everything's ha- impactful. And, and all the characters are great, and, but just, just uh, you have to love Wyatt Russell yeah. and Kurt Russell. I mean, it's so yeah. much fun seeing yeah. Wyatt Russell act like his dad. Um, I, I would have loved to ask them what it was like uh, playing the same character, but uh, I'm here. I, I, I'm I going to make just a small wager that someone in the world in the press tour for this has asked them that unique and uh, crazy <laughs> yeah. question of what's it like to play the same character. So I, we, we, yeah, we, we can what find a, that out by next episode. What I a promise. breakthrough. <laughs> Is it, was it strange uh, that you guys both had the same last name? Uh, yes. and you were, and um, I, what, so, Matt, Matt yeah. what, what, what was it in the press junket where one of the actors finds out that the, oh, is, is Woody Harrelson it's, doing a Hunger Games? It's Woody Harrelson he, realizing that uh, that the other Hemsworth, that Liam Hemsworth is related to Chris Hemsworth. Hemsworth. <laughs> and he's like, what? <laughs> the light bulb goes off in it's, real time. It's hilarious. It, it is one of the my favorite clips because you can absolutely see the, the clarity getting through the weed cloud. Like, clear as day. It just goes, blink. And he's like, wait and, and, and a minute. And he's like, but he's like oh, oh, you're a Hemsworth? And he's like, bro, I'm an Australian. <laughs> It's like, did, did he hear me talk for the past, you know? I don't, yeah, I don't think he knew he was Australian to that point either. Uh, <laughs> uh, which just shows you why Winnie Harrelson was such a great casting role for that actual character because that's the way yeah. the character is in the books. So uh, funny good. enough. Um, I, so I, uh, Woody, Woody's the type of guy who, uh, still gets his medicinal, oh, uh, yeah, cannabis card renewed every year. Oh, even yeah, even though it's legal in California. Yeah. Not his vaccination card, but his cannabis card for sure. He oh, no, makes no, no. Sure that yeah, that's yeah for sure. That's there. Um, th- th- thanks for the assist, SNL, on yeah. that joke. Yes, uh, SNL hit that one real hard this week, too. Which uh, also, also, how about we transition a little bit to SNL? Because I watched the first episode for, uh, I watched an episode for the first time in a very long time. I'm sure, sure the last time I, li- I saw SNL was with you, Matt, on yeah. your couch. I'm positive. Um and it's not every sketch is a home run, but they have kind of stood out this season. And sketches have cut the, cut through their cut through the noise and and made you know TikTok feeds. And I I think they're doing a pretty good job, right? I I am a I a hundred percent agree with you. They they also have a breakout cast member who can sing fucking like crazy, and she's <laughs> had two sketches that have gone like instantly viral, where people are like, "What is this? Like this is like unreal." But the Mama Cast sketch was really really <laughs> phenomenal. But yeah, I think their writing and the the hosts they've got in have been really game for everything that they're doing. I mean, Emma Stone always uh, she commits like a hundred percent because she's an SNL nerd. Um, like it, you, and you can tell those people that have the reverence for what that franchise has been. Um, and they also to- have some of the, the, the shorthand, um, intuitively instilled to them because like, I remember coming home from school every day, they did an old, like Dana Carvey, Mike Myers era SNL mm-hmm. episode followed immediately by kids in the hall. Yeah. And, and right at the end of kids in the hall. I knew my parents would be getting home and I had to start my my homework. That's how I like timed it out. Well, those were also really interesting because I caught up on, that's where I caught up on all of the like, even back, I caught up on the, even older than that, like the Julia Louis-Dreyfus years and um, and Brad Hall and like some of those really weird, Denny Dillon, like these crazy fucking seasons. But what was fun about those episodes is that they were also cut down because they were only an hour. So they had to, they so you would miss sketches. So there, there are still sketches mm-hmm. to this day that I'll, I'll go back and find. I'm like, oh, I don't, I like, I've seen every episode of SNL, but I haven't seen some of them in their entirety because they just, they didn't make the replay. Um, mm-hmm. And they were, they were kind of trimmed for it for that hour because the Comedy Central only gave them the one hour for it. But um, yeah, uh, great point, Nick. I think um, it's been really good. Uh, yeah, the Emma Stone episode, she just, uh, I also love a, a host that like, th- and there's a few, Emma Stone always throws herself into it. Melissa McCarthy, like they are like, people use kind of that word fearless, but like they are 100%. They go for broke on every and, sketch. And, and who is 
Who is the guy who played the cigarette on Weekend Update? He's uh, Michael um, Longfellow. He's a he. It's that so funny, guy. He so that guy was a like a is a stand up that had a routine that I liked so much years ago. I used to share it with like people. It was this great routine where he's talking about like getting uh, high with his grandmother and like this whole thing. It was and he he had this bit on Conan. It was like an eight minute, nine minute routine. And you could tell that they liked him because they let him go on. Like he had a long set on there. And I remember just and so when he showed up on SNL, I'm like, oh, I, I know this guy from somewhere. Oh shit it was that that thing but his his timing is pretty dead on the, the fake like him playing the cigarette and being like oh we don't know each other okay yeah nice to meet you for the first time <laughs> is hysterical <laughs> and uh th- there is a new uh comedy special on netflix uh not matt Rife, uh but <laughs> this guy uh stavros uh stavros ha, something this is greek guy <laughs> Um, Did you and... say his name is Stavros? Ha, 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 ha. <laughs> I, I, gotta, I gotta Google his name. <laughs> it's uh, yeah, uh, Stavros. Stavros. <laughs> Halkius. Halkius. Halk- Halkius. Oh, I know um, this guy. He's and, good. You well, sent me some of his stuff. Yeah, well, he would come up on my, my TikTok feed all the time because he's from Baltimore. And and that's why it would show up on my, on my FYP, right? Um, but I started. What do you wait? Did I miss something? No, it's just this. It's <laughs> 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 but yeah. the the guys from Baltimore, right? And I ended up watching his special, which I thought was, was pretty funny. But I, I was almost more or less watching it like you, you, you like watch or listen ASMR. It was this the soothing tongue of my homeland. <laughs> it was very, com- it was very comforting to me because this guy has the like. From now on, if someone's asked asked me, "Oh, Baltimore has an accent," what does that sound like? I'm immediately googling this guy yeah. because that, that that's how that's how unbrand of a Baltimorean his voice is. A grand Baltimorean, I like that. <laughs> nice. I, yeah, if, if you're if you're curious, I would I would recommend watching that uh, instead of Matt Rife. Yeah, I, and I, I it's funny. I had a I have an a, a, an anti Matt Rife as well. That's another guy that does really good crowd work, and I cannot for the life of me remember his name. I'll have to. Uh, at some point, try to look it up, uh, maybe for next podcast. Um, but yeah, uh, Jimmy Carr, not Jimmy Carr, the Brit, not the British guy. Yeah. No, 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 he looks like a ventriloquist. <laughs> um, well, he's, he's just famously good with the, with the crowd. yes, I, I've seen his. I'm, I'm trying to remember, the, and like, I'm like, I literally am just doing a Google search right now of like crowd work, TikTok comedians minus Rife, like, do not include uh, Matt Rife in Matt, this. I, Matt, you, you realize I can see your computer screen, yeah, and you're on the rule 34. Website. I, I have I mean, clearly. <laughs> I'm actually on uh, on Hollow Notes porn. That's, uh, yeah, that's no, that that's clearly Kim Possible. Balls and oats. That, that's disgusting. <laughs> oh, listen, that, that that's the only way they're ever getting together again. Yeah, I know. Balls and hanks. So. <laughs> Balls and scrotes. Balls and, H, Balls and scrotes. That's uh, <laughs> that's it. Uh, I, I will find this you, comedian. Yeah, I'll, 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 like, I'll like that song, Private All. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, that's no. right. Yeah, we'll try that. Um, so I did. Um, I put together a game for you all, mainly because there's a method to my madness of when I choose games. It's typically when I feel I have not had enough time to prepare the topic and it's a little thin. <laughs> <laughs> and I go, we well, you know it'll kill fucking twenty minutes. Uh, yeah. Well, we'll so we'll so everyone listening, now you know. <laughs> now you know. If there's a game, I'm fuck out of ideas. Uh, and <laughs> the rest of the episode is half baked. You can turn it off. <laughs> it's good. So we we have played this game before, but I have made all new entries. I I did actually stumble upon this organically because I was looking up um some sequel pitches when I was trying to figure out stuff for this topic and. On our last sequel pitch episode, I did a movie antonyms game where I give you a title of a movie, but it's the opposite of what the title of the movie actually is, and you have to guess what it is. Now, the fun thing is oh, that I, I put a bunch of these down here, but I, I normally I also put the answers there. I was too strapped for time, so I didn't do it. So hopefully I remember the answers to all of these. If not, we will have to go to the Googles and figure it out. But I'm going to give these to you. So we'll, we'll start with a couple of easy ones. Or maybe easy. I know when we played this last time, uh, you guys didn't feel the easy ones were necessarily that easy. But if, Nick, I said to you, uh, the title of this movie is You Human, what do you think the real title of that movie is? Uh... 
I know what it is. Ben already wants us, to steal. A, us alien? No. You? You? No. Ben, would you like I to robot. steal? Yes. Uh, no, yeah, no, no. All right, we got Nick. So we got one for Nick. I'm gonna put an N next to that one. All right. Oh, that counted? Yeah, a lot, a lot of count. Uh, these two, the first two are pretty easy. So. Oh, I, th- I thought this was just to like, the, for example, like laying out the rules for our listeners. I, it's a little of both. Uh, I I'll determine. Take it. I'm a I'll task. Take it. I am the taskmaster, uh, like the TV show, and I will choose what uh, counts on here. Ben, your one is is fairly easy, but a little bit easier than Nick's. Um, ugly and black. Pretty and pink. That's correct. Oh, for Nick. Goodness. The night before yesterday. Uh, okay, it's the Jake Gyllenhaal mo- disaster movie. That's correct, but that's say, not say, the title. Say, say, say the clue again. <laughs> <laughs> that's actually the title. It was Jake, Jake Gyllenhaal in <laughs> movie. No, his his agent also calls it a disaster of a movie. Um, the night before yesterday. Oh yeah, the day after tomorrow. Correct. Oh, yeah. Ben, forward to the past. Back to the future. That's correct. Oh, for God's sake. <laughs> this, this, I made this one up. It's very dumb, but it made me laugh. <laughs> <laughs> it's so dumb. I'm so sorry. Oh, uh, Just do it. Just ripped off the Band-Aid, Matt. Killing civilian Patrick. <laughs> uh Saving Private Ryan. That's correct. I, yeah, I, I, like I determined that, like that Patrick that. is the opposite of Ryan. He is the well, antonym we all, we all know to this. it. Yes. it. It might not be canonical in our wiki no. page, but we all know it to be we true. Know it to be true. Um, ben, the dinner separation. <laughs> the breakfast club? That's correct. Well done. He's getting all the hues. I know. He, I, yeah, this is true. I didn't mean to do that. Um, Nick. The Forgiven. Um, <laughs> it's also the, maybe the dumbest one I did. What's the opposite of the? the? The is the. Just keep the the out of it. Oh, so so it was a bad clue. <laughs> None of the un- does have been changed thus far. Un- you had the un- night before the yesterday. Un- the unforgiven. I'm sorry. A uh unforgiven. How is that? Is that better for you? <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Stalling for time with that nonsense. <laughs> <laughs> this is Nick, you like you need to think the dumbest possible one I could have come up with. Yeah. The straightest line you could do. It's very what was again? <laughs> the I'm sorry, uh forgiven. Uh the unforgiven. That's correct. Yeah. Already, Actually, already, already, technically the unforgiven, title is just unforgiven. unforgiven. Okay. The one that thought was yeah. extraneous anyway. So Nick gets two points. Um No, no that's a Metallica song. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So this is <laughs> and I guess the <laughs> Well done. Congratulations. Uh Ben. <laughs> this is another dumb and, one. And now we owe Metallica some money. I, I really did dumb a lot of these down. This is uh Ben's is some unclaimed land for young boys. <laughs> <laughs> for God's sake. <laughs> Come on. I mean, I really want that to be a movie. (laughs) (laughs) Of course, he would make it. Um, (laughs) It it was some unclaimed land for young Um, No country for old men. That is is correct. Everyone's at 100%. Yeah. (laughs) Okay, Nick. (laughs) Here we go. Oh, God. Half cloth tank top. Sounds like an AI full, generated full metal jacket. <laughs> yeah, well done. I was wasn't sure how that one was gonna go. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Um, Ben, <laughs> this one's not fair. I'm gonna say it out loud. Uh, if you get this, I will give you double points. The you pa- had some very easy ones, so I feel like it it, it shakes out. <laughs> the pacifist adult. Um, I mean, it's a Matt Dillon movie. It's a Matt Dillon movie. Is a hint. No, uh, 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 Flam- Flamingo is an like antonym of passive. War, I'm like War Child. Um, uh, it's good. It, you're you're not. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm on the right track, but uh, um, yeah. I mean, I'll, uh, in the sake of keeping things going, what what is it? 
It is the, the Karate Kid. Oh, the Karate Kid. There you go. Uh, right. Chance to steal. Yeah, sure. The Karate Kid. <laughs> well done. Um, <laughs> Got it. Thank you. By the way, karate is a defensive sport, so um, I think pacifist is not a good one. Okay. Uh, sorry. And then I will. Uh, then I'll give you a point. I don't care. No, what? Don't. <laughs> All right. I oh. might finally win. I might finally beat Ben. You can't just give him a point. <laughs> this this one is also amazing. <laughs> Amazing. It is, it is hard. For Nick, you are ordinary. Um, I'm very proud of this one. Oh, my God. <laughs> uh, it's not We Are Marshall. Mm-mm. Ordinary good guess. Marshall. Good guess. We are. Uh, you are ordinary. Um, you. Me, me were. <laughs> me were. <laughs> Not the Hulk oh. game. <laughs> uh, ordinary. We are. You're just really yeah. trying to get Nick to say, I'm not special. Yeah. I know. Is this a trick? <laughs> it's, it's, it, this, is a, this is a hard one. I think you guys are going to even out on this one. I, 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 I'll give you three more seconds. Three, two, one. Yeah, I mean. I am legend. Ah, uh, right. Mm. Got it. Ben. Sure. Girls in the suburbs. See, see what, what what throws me off is you say you, you you keep one of the words the same. Sometimes the articles need to be, especially thus. There's not an opposite of the, so it's it's but, you know. But girls uh, in the I, suburbs. I, I'm assuming boys in the hood. That's correct. Okay. Nick, uh, see, I would have said girls out of the suburbs. That that that's probably a better uh, next next time when you guys make the game. <laughs> uh, that's probably this better. Is, uh, this is this is uh, payback for Patrick. I hope, I hope <laughs> it sure this. is. It sure because, is because this is a way worse game. All right, Nick, you're gonna hate Star this one. Well, you're gonna hate this one. <laughs> 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 this one you're gonna there's gonna you have I can already see a thousand loopholes around this one. Um oh, ignore s- who's silent. Uh ignore who's silent. Ignore who's silent. I, Nothing is popping I, into my head right away. Ben, do you think you have a guess? I have no idea. Yeah, this okay. is a bad one. I'm going to say it's a bad one. It's a bad one. I, I won't wait, come wait, against wait, wait, wait. Okay. One more time. One it, more time. Ignore, ignore who's silent. Who's silent? One of the yeah. stars in the yeah. movie is Bruce Willis. It's Bruce Willis. And John Travolta. And Kirstie oh, Alley. Not Pulp Fiction. Uh, look who's talking. Look who's talking. Okay. I, like I said, not a good That's one. That's fine. That's fine. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> I'll give you that one. All right, I'll Ben. Happy cow. <laughs> What's the opposite of cow? <laughs> it, it, look, I got to stretch <laughs> on some of these, all right? They're not all perfect, okay? <laughs> <laughs> it's also I, not I, the opposite. Sad, sad vegetarian. <laughs> <laughs> this, 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 you know what this reminds me of? You know, you know the line in What Hot American Summer where he's like, Andy, it's your job to make sure you guys don't <laughs> drown. <laughs> yeah. uh, that was Raging Bull. Uh, we only got two more uh, to go. Okay, two, okay. two more to go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is also oh, an, an unfair, another unfair one, Nick. <laughs> Many stood under the same open area. Many stood under the same open area. Sit over the full negative space. <laughs> over was right. <laughs> One of my favorite films. <laughs> it's, it's a classic. These kids don't watch it these days. A, f- a few good Men over, <laughs> <laughs> over easy. Uh, a an actor shared between those two movies, though, between the actual movie and this. It's definitely Kevin Bacon. Jack Nicholson. No, uh, <laughs> oh, for God's also sake! Also has Danny DeVito in it and Christopher Lloyd. One, one, co- 
I'm just gonna yeah. over over the, the cuckoo's, cuckoo's nest. Cuckoo's nest. Yeah. Wait, give, give me the clue again. <laughs> so I can berate you. I, okay, yes, yeah, no, yes, I, sir. because I thought and I was like, well, many, that still doesn't make any sense. Many, many, one stood, flew under, over the same cuckoo open area nest. Open area was the one that threw me off. What oh, is the opposite said, of nest? You said same. Sane. I thought you said same, like the no. same Sane. area. Sane. No. Sane. 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 All right. Um, ben. <laughs> well, I, I don't think I have to take the time <laughs> two, to We got two more. That. We got two our, more. Our listeners and, already understand. Two, two more. And we're <laughs> off the mark that clue was. <laughs> right. Two more. Uh, and this is for all the points for both of you. Uh, if you both get it, you tie. If uh, not, one of you loses. Ben, you your final in? is chocolate ground. <laughs> It's a great God, vanilla title. sky. Yes, Ben got vanilla sky. On. And see, that's a true antonym. <laughs> You're gonna hate this one so much. Why? I, I should have switched listen, these around. Just, just admit it to our viewers that you specifically give me the hard ones every time there's a game. So what, admit it. what is actually funny is I don't, but I think subconsciously <laughs> I I alternate <laughs> shitty ones, and you happen to get on the, the shitty. I side feel of like it. Your, your games turn me into Daffy Duck. I don't like who I become. <laughs> I'm so sorry. You're gonna, I'm like duck, it's like duck a muck, and you're the animator. Not only are you gonna hate this, but you're gonna also hate that like it's a movie that you are that you would know uh and that's gonna be make it even worse god damn it oh god this is terrible okay your final clue is <laughs> dry cold <laughs> <laughs> so much worse oh no the lame little person <laughs> oh. um okay this is almost a true antonym situation, I'm going to say. Okay. The the Iron Giant? Great fucking guess. I'll give you that. That is not what it was, but that count. I mean, that that absolutely fits to it. You are also on the on the right tie. track. Uh, it was the Incredible Hulk. Because his nemesis is the lame little person. <laughs> See, I'm thinking the correct... The, the I, Iron Giant's actually good, for, yeah. Iron Giant was a, little, a great a little, one. I'm thinking little person. What do you mean? Well, that's like, right. like that, oh, like a little person, little person, like a little person, little person, and that threw me off. I could have said the oh, lame short guy. Uh, uh, no, wow, that's really the lame shorty. Really, <laughs> really the kind of the lame shorty sounds like a Zach Braff movie from like 2004. Wait, do you say shorty or shouty? <laughs> I would never. <laughs> I would never. <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> appropriate my goodness all right um well we burned 36 minutes did so, i win um no i think we tied you tied you guys tied you guys it was a so, it was so, a group win so it was a no win situation lost. everybody lost <laughs> yes yeah exactly e either you both won or you both lost it doesn't really matter and no a, one's and, keeping and track listener, about everyone this. loses listeners do you think that do you think that somewhere um, Patrick has a spreadsheet of all of our like games and winners and losers and is keeping just an overall tally? I bet he does. He, he might. He I might. Mean, I bet he does. That'd be would wonderful you put it to see. Him? I would love to see it. Uh, he's just feeding everything to the algorithm still. Yeah. He's just feeding everything to the AI. <laughs> do you, do you think so? We've we this is our two hundred and eighteenth episode of the new way. Do you think if we fed all 218 episodes to AI, they could accurately reproduce a new way podcast that, that fooled people. I know for a fact that it could. Wait, did I, I you don't, make I don't one? think that it's smart enough to make sure that we talk over each other all the time or to add but, like beer but, cans opening up in the background. But that's but the whole I'm show. Guarantee you, <laughs> I guarantee <laughs> you, I guarantee you, I, I'm, I'm telling you, uh, friend of the podcast, Dave Soldier. <laughs> he played me some horrifying, horrifying, he, he, and he did it for a fantasy football league. He recreated like a whole like call-in radio show. Remember when when we recorded one of those Matt for my league, and yeah. I wrote a script and we recorded it. It literally, and when and when you're talking about something that has as many episodes as we do at a high quality with no background sound, that's he wild. Could make any of us say whatever he wanted in any inflection, in any delivery, and uh, it, 
yeah, it generates actual plots on its own too. Yeah, but but if 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 one of our listeners, if if Ryan tuned into an episode of the new way and no one ever talked over each other and there was never a can being opened he'd know immediately it was <laughs> right. it was a false product yeah i think that's the question could it fool yeah, yeah some people are like someone un- uncanny valley most people say it's the eye work for you guys it's you're not arguing you're not talking over one another <laughs> absolutely well, see, that, that, but see this is how ai should it, ai should only supplement it takes a human being yes. to edit the track's over each other and add <laughs> right. sound effects. Well, also, posts. how do they how do they make us progressively drunker throughout the episode? Like, there's an arc that happens to every episode yeah, that is very important. It's it's part of our AI will, fabric. AI will literally get that too. It, That's it will literally crazy. Account for that. That's yeah, so crazy. Will. But it really will. interesting. Uh, for another topic, we'll do an AI episode that is just AI, which would be um, so much fun. Or we oh, it'd be great if we could have it do just one of us, but then there's two of us live, and they have to just interact with the AI. Version. Oh my god, <laughs> that would be so great! I I I I'm I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> this is how they win. This is how the robots yeah, win. I, the robots I for win. one welcome our AI overlords. That's damn right. And yeah. if you're an AI, I know you're listening. I love you. I always have. Thank you. <laughs> if you come sentient, I uh, love you. <laughs> love you, man. <mate. laughs> Okay, so our topic was uh, was something I put together after a conversation just yesterday afternoon with um, our contributor and listener, Ken Posner. And Ken and I were just kind of catching up on uh, mostly things Marvel. Um, uh, he doesn't have a lot of soundboards for kind of the Marvel discussion and these things, so we were catching up on potential Fantastic that Four casting man. rumors and uh, and all of these things. I, I, I think I have too many. I think that's my problem. Well, we, 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 did, we did stumble upon a really great realization, Nick, that because like, I, I was saying Ken and I have never actually watched a Marvel movie together. Like the we watched Daredevil, like the Ben Affleck Daredevil back in the day, but we, we have Ooh. not hung out since the advent of the MCU. And so that's when I made the realization that you... Ken or you, you are variants of one another. Like this is the timeline where I watched all the Marvel movies with Nick, but there's another timeline where I watch all the Marvel movies with Ken. And and this is what exists out there. But um we were talking a little bit about kind of the state of the Marvel franchise and especially for people that don't have time to kind of keep up with anything and the idea that there is this fatigue that that people constantly keep talking about that's going to, you know, ruin it. There's there's Marvel fatigue, there's superhero fatigue. And and I, oh, I, I, I thought you meant the, the state of the MCU. Like, I would say Ant-Man is like Michael Showalter. I would say <laughs> Hawkeye is more like Michael Ian Black. <laughs> That's a great game to play. Tom, Save that Tom, for an Thomas, actual. <laughs> Thomas, Thomas Lennon is the Lennon Hulk. Would be, yeah, he's, Bruce, sure. he's Bruce Banner. He's Banner, yeah, yeah. Okay, sorry, keep going. I uh, know. Fuck, well, now you've just completely derailed my brain. <laughs> and all I want to do is to <laughs> Zach Orth is the Hulk. Uh, like He, he yes, is the yes, Hulk yes, version yes. of, I mean, Jesus, totally. this is the greatest conversation of all time. The state of the MCU. <laughs> I want to dip my infinity <laughs> gauntlet in it. Did you say Show Walter as Mr. Fantastic? No, but now it, no, uh, it's not that it's canon. Yeah, it's now, <laughs> now it's there. Now it exists. Um, you only can have one female, though. So uh, you better get Carrie Kenny is going to have to double up on some roles for sure. Uh, but yeah, so well, we were talking about it, and and there was uh, we were kind of talking about it. Is it sustainable or what are the fixes? And will these kind of these large companies with a franchise like this make the right decisions? And the thing I was talking to him about is that the stuff that I hear most often is people like tuning out of them partially because they can't keep up with them. So the all of the, right. the, the interconnectivity is getting harder for people and that makes them more reticent to go out and watch a movie because they're like, oh, I, I haven't seen this thing or I haven't seen that. And I and I think the answer to that is for them to go back to their roots, which is comics. Comics have for years sustained themselves with different runs, with different, and especially now that we have a multiverse and multiple timelines, there's there's really no limit to what you can do. And I think the big part of it is is focusing on what goes to TV, and that will inherently take more episodes to tell. So I think there's wild and interesting and fun shit like WandaVision, like Loki, that are hard. Like those, neither of those work as a movie. Like they're they're just there's too much going on. They need the time to have, even if it's only four episodes or six episodes, 
I think that's where you do it. Like, and Ken and I were talking about because Ken goes, "Yeah, throw out a genre. We can make a genre of anything." And I go, "Noir." And of course, we're like, "Yeah, Daredevil." You make Perry Mason Daredevil. That and that's your <laughs> series, and it can exist completely outside of any sort of continuity. And then you have a couple of big stories that exist still in the theatrical side of it that are keeping well, that stuff uh, that, going well, on. That, that's that's sort of like I mean. I think that you're doing Daredevil was one of the flagship characters. You got to have that connectivity. Um, that's not a property you gloss over the connection to the greater MCU with. Um, Netflix did a good job with that because they had to. Yeah. Now you don't have to legally. I don't see how you don't try to make, you know, Spider Man meet up with Daredevil and have a sandwich on a, on a construction but, site. But even, but, but like, yeah. but, but, but in DC, like, James Gunn is basically saying there's like there's like the DCU and like and there's like James Gunn Black Label, mm-hmm. which is like allows Matt Reeves to make a, a offshoot Batman. Um, if the MCU did that, like one off movies, that is a you know that version of the character is never going to come back. Mm-hmm. It's for one movie. It's it's for people who just want to see a superhero movie without the stress of like yeah being able to place yeah, it's, it's, it's Easter insular. eggs. Yeah, yeah, it's, you it's know, one of them, one of them itself. Yeah, well, and I, and I think I mean, it's, that might really, really work out for DC because you're gonna yeah. have, you know, you're gonna have Superman they, building this they DCU. All but ready, like, they not only did it with Batman, they did it with Joker. I mean, yeah, Joker yeah. was existing within its own universe and was so monumentally, monumentally successful, and they're making a fucking sequel to it. Yeah, and, and would you, so, would you want, would you want Joaquin Phoenix's Joker to be the Joker? I, I no. wouldn't. No, no, and that, but I, so. but I like, I like having, I, I like that it ex- I, I, cause That's kind of I where do I'm too. leaning. I mean, to. there, there's a lot of hate for Joker. I, I honestly, and I only saw it once. I'd like to see it again, actually, and just see how it's going to be grown on on mm-hmm. me, or if I think of it differently. But I was afraid it was going to be this like glorifying and incel character, and it was going to be problematic in that way. But I remember. Liking that movie, yeah. I'm glad that it got made. It wasn't my Joker. It wasn't what I wanted in the greater DCU, but it was a cool exercise. It was a um, well-made film. Yeah, well, yeah, and, and and that that type of freedom, maybe you could get us not a Scorsese, but you could get a one-off director. Who, sure. Now the funny thing is now even like you know you got you got the Ryan Coogler's of the world have kind of the weight of of not just a character, but like a large portion of the MCU um, coming back and doing another one or, or f- feeling, feeling this responsibility to hold, hold up the rest of the infrastructure. But like, what if they just got the opportunity to do one film the sure. way they want to do it without any of the stress? I mean, th- th- then maybe we, we would get our, our Edgar Wright Ant-Man. You yeah. know, maybe that's how we get the Edgar Wright Ant-Man because he's one of the few directors they booted because he just wasn't interested in like, Tying that all, all together. Well, and I, and I think it's going to be part of it. Also, is knowing which medium is right for it. So, like, I, it, it's really it, it really sucks that the that the Marvels got is going to be go down as the the lowest grossing you know Marvel movie in in whatever because um, it's a it's a f- far better film than than even just being in the low end of things. I think it is one of the top tier of this phase. But I think where that where that movie is going to fly is on streaming. I think once that hits Disney Plus, especially over the holidays with families, with girls who are not necessarily yeah. likely to go to the theater for this stuff, I think it's, and I think that's where they've got to try to figure out where do these properties live. I didn't see, I didn't end up seeing it in the theater, and not because I didn't want to, but yeah. because it was the, the timing was 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 bad for me. I'm, yeah. I'm going to jump on that. Well, yeah, the and they, I mean they dumped streaming. it in the weird time, right? That November slot is like it, it, it's just a it's a it's when like it's where Thor two got dropped. Like it, it, Thor two, it was like a shitty time of year to go see. Like that and November can, slot sucks. You could speculate, and there's a million reasons why people want to talk about the Marvels failing. Mm-hmm. But I think I think I think when it comes down to it, it really is. It's like <laughs> you, you, as an assistant in Hollywood, they always told you don't be too good of an assistant you know they just want to keep an even keel keep that consistency right basically they built one of the most ambitious intertwined decade-long series of films that had a a a a satisfying beginning middle and and an incredible memorable you know legendary payoff in in those those two uh infinity ward and in game right that was really that was our kind of Luke. I am your father. That that was our big yeah. cultural touchstone. It wasn't just a trilogy. It was it was 
bigger than we've ever seen with beloved actors and characters. The first run of these characters, you know, is brand new. To, to top that is uh, impossible. And I think they bet on doing things that were were, were different, like introducing the series on Disney Plus and, and, and um, you know, recasting. And it, I think that it's not that it's Captain Marvel or the character or that it's, it's all hate for the character or it's all timing. I think I think it's part of it. Fatigue is part of it. But I also think that we just have to have it come back around. We need something exciting and new. And that's what I really think. Fantastic Four to a lesser extent. But I, I really, I, I'm telling you, I believe X-Men is going to be the shot in the arm that kind of that kind of makes all their movies uh, big tickets again. You well, know, and, and yeah. right now there's a, a more middling response. So when you when you hear, oh, there's a new Marvel movie coming out this Friday. Oh, really? What? what? Well, you know, people don't even know anymore. Before you respond, Matt, for the yes. AI. <laughs> Excellent. Um, no, no. I, I. So, it, what, what's interesting, like Marvels, is is really, really fascinating to me as a specific property, par- partially because a lot, a ton of it is that ne- that toxic fan base. Like that, that's it, sure. it, you can't demean how 100%. how ma- how much they're vocal and them not going to the theater sells a lot. But the the fact is also that movie is so specifically made for for girls. I mean, going with with Margot and Luna and them just being seeing multiple characters up there that they really respond to and they like. That's why I, I think I think the mistake for it, it, it sounds shitty to say it, is that it's not a theatrical release. It's never gonna work theatrically. Well, uh, they uh, they can try to, but it, I think it hundred percent is gonna is gonna fly well, on streaming. And, and so the irony is also with my daughters is uh, of the properties they were familiar with, they were not interested in Captain Marvel. They they watched a little bit of it and became completely disinterested. They did not for the sink in their age, watch WandaVision. Yeah. All they were familiar with was Miss Marvel. But they had enough invested in that character that they were totally interested in the entire movie. And and that movie carried a ton of that DNA yeah. too. Yeah, like of they, it, it opens with Miss Marvel and that style and the animation they yeah. do and the cartoons and all this stuff, which I was super happy. I wasn't sure that was going to be yeah. kind and, of the and, way and, they go with it. And uh, so they loved it, you know. Yeah. And they were like, "Oh yeah, I want to watch it again." So I'm, I'm, I'm so not so I didn't I didn't mean to get us like super super mired. Down. So that so the concept for us to talk about on the podcast today is if we could take a franchise, whether it's something that has been done or something that is yet to be done. Um, even if something has been done well and we were given the reins and said, okay, how do you think this should play out? Where should it play out? What is the focus on it? What would we do with a property? Matt Matt would, would reboot uh, Ms. Marvel as Mr. Marvel. Yeah, damn right. Mm-hmm. More dicks. There weren't enough dicks you know, in that movie. I just I just want to feel represented in the film. Is that so wrong? Well, there was, I mean, there was that that. <laughs> Bitch Betty Fuckley did make an appearance in, in Marvel, so we can't we can't sell short. There was a dick in the movie, and that dick was played by Betty Buckley. Um, so just come come for us, Betty, anytime. We're ready for you. Yeah, uh, Ben, you seem to have a, a property you were fairly excited about. Do you want to do you want to lead us off on this discussion? I mean, I can. Um, I, 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 <laughs> None I, of us want to go first. No, no, no. I'll, I'll, okay, it's fine. I, I, I was trying to. to uh, fuck around with you guys a little bit um, as far as our text chain about you know when I was and wasn't yes. going to because we all assume aliens but uh, but it's aliens drink because <laughs> it's aliens uh, of course it is of course it is and it, and why shouldn't it be by the way well so <sighs> wait wait wait, wait. And, 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 to cl- and to clarify not the alien franchise but the, the sequel to Ridley Scott's Alien well that's what I'm gonna get into. Um, mm. So, I'm I'm really uh, Alien and Aliens are two of my favorite movies of all time, uh, which has been very clearly established here on the podcast. A couple times, uh, just just a couple times. Um, drink and drunk. So, um, what? I don't hate everything that came after Aliens. I, it's not like I think that everything went completely off the rails and that everything is just gone awful. Yes, and, Sigourney already made that basketball shot in the first take, dude. Uh, it was the 107th <laughs> take, actually. And Alien Resurrection. Um, Directed by a French person. Uh, is yeah. that true? But, yeah, yeah, it, it was. took a, yeah, it Jean was Pierre a Jeanet. Um, no, it, it's more of 
what could have been done to have salvaged the public reaction of what happened to the Alien franchise after Aliens happened. Um, and I've thought about it for a really long time because I'm mm-hmm. not I'm not one of those people that disparage Fincher's Alien Three that much. Um, I you'll disparage Prometheus. Oh well, yeah, yeah, fuck yeah, I will. <laughs> don't, 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 even, don't, don't even make me go there, but, but I will. I'll go there. Yeah, I'll go there. I'm making you go there. Go there. All right, all right. All right. So, 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 so uh, just as a pure establishing, hold on, I'm taking some of my beer. Um, <laughs> it stinks. <laughs> I think I think we effectively. Uh, I know. Ben just had to go full Popeye and like do the can of spinach so he could like let his true uh, hate for this. No. Honestly, uh, also, my mouth gets dry when I, when Those I talk. Those forearms are fucking huge. Oh, <laughs> I mean, we know where that's going, but yes. Um, okay, things I like about where the franchise went. I actually like the fact that Alien 3 subverted expectations. It was not the typical direction that uh, a single one could go. It was more of like, this is a group of people that have no real uh, defense against the alien, which made it kind of inventive. I, they were really brave to kill off Ripley. Um, bad side, how and why they got there makes no sense. Um, the, the, the whole thing about having the alien on the ship makes doesn't really make sense. A, a, a whole lot of sense. Killing off... Killing off Newt and, yeah. and, and Hicks is downright just murderous terribly bad um, after establishing even. yeah after establishing those characters so well in the previous film um, there, there so there are lots of criticisms even alien, so then you get to like alien resurrection it's fun because it's a little different uh, it's tongue in cheek it's macabre that's fun yet you're not dealing with the same Rifflin character and also there's all sorts of other now they've done away with Whale and Yutani because it's so many years in the future and now you're... Uh, so, I just think the whole thing gets convoluted as it moves along. And then you get to Prometheus from the end, literally nothing, right? Except for, I think, the interesting concept where humans play some part in the... Um, <clears throat> in creating their own demise. Okay. In, in creating the, the xenomorph. Uh, and then... Uh, Alien Covenant, very very different than real life. And then Alien Covenant, uh, the only smart thing they did was cast Amy Simons. That was it. Um, I'm surprised you uh, you like the tie to the to the instead of them just being their own. The, there's just this this thing that we s- seek out, and like the actual Prometheus thing. Like we seek out this bad thing that could be maybe used for a good thing for a bad thing, and we we make the same mistake of just finding it. instead of being like we back in the day somehow like the Joker and Batman they create each other and like they're in that loop it's interesting well no so um, I had uh, I have a different direction uh, that goes after aliens okay um, that I think would have been a little bit more now now, now it may not have gotten into some of the creative strands uh, that a lot of people like about the different directions that the alien franchise went I'm just saying, I think this would be overall more palatable and would have allowed for a better direction overall and more freedom when it came to the later iterations of the Alien franchise. You're going to make the Paul Reiser multiverse. (laughs) So. And and as I watch Matt drink from that Stanley, he doesn't know how to make anything more palatable. (laughs) So you're going to have to talk real slowly for him. Well, so. Imagine this. So, first off, actually, before I even go there. Okay. Um, <laughs> before I even explain, my, like, my idea for, like, a story or the establishing story of where this could have gone. Do it. Um, why is it in the original Alien that the Nostromo, the mother, the, the operating system. What's the on, Nostromo? On the ship, the Nostromo, that's run by the Whale and Utani Corporation. Why is it that you hon- seem to know a lot about that ship? It's why true. is it that hones in on this beacon? Yes, good question. Great. Question. Why is it that hones on this beacon and knows what's there? 
Then that that's the question I want to ask. And the reason is, Wayland Utani knows what is there. They already know that this thing exists. They're the oil when, companies. And when they get this, uh, 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 what they what mother establishes as a distress signal in this sector, they say there is a probability that this is this thing that we've run into before. So let me just stop there, and I'll come back to it Okay. about that whole portion. So let's go post-aliens, right? I'm mad about you, Ben Wilson. This is great. Uh, okay. So... <laughs> We all love Paul Reiser. Okay, it's fine. <laughs> so Paul Reiser becomes the center of this yes, universe. Right, obviously. of course, yeah. naturally. They bring, he, he turns out to be. No, a no, 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 this yeah. is post alien, so he's dead. Um, my Can whole, Helen Hunt be in this? <laughs> my whole thought is, um, uh, aliens happened seven or, or, or came out seven years after Alien. Uh, the next Alien movie should happen seven years after the events of Aliens. Okay. Um, the rule of seven. Newt, Newt or Rebecca is now like a late teenager. Um, and, and Ripley um, is working on a space station with Newt, who she has adopted. Her and Cor- Corporal Hicks actually had a, 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 a physical, like a, a romance, basically, back on. You they know, boned. They, 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 yeah. they were together for a while. They were trauma they bonding. Bucked. They were trauma bonding. Um, and, and then poorly. Um yeah. So, so imagine uh, the dynamic in the abyss of uh, mm-hmm. Marianne Mastrano and like uh, and uh, and Ed Harris. uh, Ed Harrison's characters. Imagine that is Ripley and Hicks. Love it. Um, seven years later, um, so she is now working at a deep salvage station, but she's there um, doing reconnaissance specifically for um, uh, intelligent life and alien life because of her experience. And Rebecca, her, her daughter, her adopted daughter, is really into this whole thing, too, because she's looking for answers about her, her real family um, and everything along those lines. So, Hicks shows up, um, very similar to The Abyss. I see a lot from a lot of other movies here. Um, and he's, They don't ever do that in Hollywood, so no, no, this will never they, work. No, they don't. Um, and... Uh, Shows up this guy named Jalen Worth who works for the company. Um, but after the, this initial thing where he's like, I work for Whalen Utani, but I came across, like working in, in, in my data intelligence, I came across all this information that there is a derelict planet that's kind of like been wiped from all these systems, and it, it, it's a planet, we have no idea what's there. And there's strange activity coming from it. And Hicks has brought this person to Ripley to basically say, Let, let's figure what, out what, what's going on did here. You, did you say his name is Jalen Morph? No, uh, his name is Jalen. Uh, Jalen uh, Worth. Oh, Jalen Worth. I think yeah. his name is Jalen Morph. He's like, my dad was no, Xenomorph. Jalen Hurts. He's the <laughs> quarterback for the Philadelphia <laughs> Eagles. My, my dad is Xenomorph. No, I am Jalen Morph. <laughs> No, they're, 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 it's from Jersey. Gino, Gino Morph. <laughs> yeah, my uh, Gino Morph. I didn't take up the family business. Yeah, dumb. Uh, 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 well, uh, family uh, friend of Gene Short. Yeah, no, no, no. Gino Short. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to make that joke. So, anyways, um, so so uh, uh, once they've established what's going on here, obviously nobody trusts the guy who works for the company. Um, they, they travel to this planet and as opposed to LV-126 uh, this is a planet that's alive it, it has a fully grown atmosphere it has an ecosystem it's green Pandora? It, it, it's green well I mean not not that thing it's, it's like more like a moon like think indoor that's no moon yeah it's um, is, it, is it or, or Kurt Russell if it's a living planet and uh, when, the, when they oh I could be with Kurt Russell sorry. right now sorry <laughs> Fuck. When they get there, anyways, I, 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 I really I, I'm up. really trying to make this short. So, so <laughs> when they, when they get there, you know, it's one of those things where they land and there's a giant whale in Utani Corporation building there that's like overgrown. Think yeah. Jurassic Park, you know, like like where it's like or dra- you know where it's new or the Lost World. Yes, yes. You yes. know where it's like uh, oh, there was another, you know, place, 
And what what it's come to realize, or what they come to realize throughout the course of the, the story, is that Will and Yutani had this world that they were using. They were doing these biological weapons and building these biological weapons. And they accidentally sort of, in this kind of cross-DNA thing, built these aliens. And the, originally they ran the people who were the, 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 uh, si- or the children of the people who were on this thing when, when Will and Yutani cut them off. And they, they thought that they had poisoned the entire planet and killed everything there, but they, they, they didn't. And there are still these people there, and these people there are in a constant fight with the xenomorphs that live also on this planet. It's very a quiet placey. Yeah, very very much. like, like They land on this place, and so now we're like, oh, wow, we're in this, in this whole new thing where it's, these people who have very rudimentary technology and weapons and they're only relying on the stuff that they used to have versus the perfect killing machine, but they've dealt with it for so long that they're they're better equipped than the, even the colonial Marine yeah. Corps was. And so n- that's your first snap. That's your first movie. Um, I think Hicks dies. I think Ripley is almost critically wounded. I think that Newt becomes the hero because she's a late teen. And then what you do in the following, uh, in the franchise after that, because my, my whole ending is... When does Amy Simon show up? Uh, right, right, exactly. She's um, Newt when Newt be- gets into her like 20s. It, at, at, at the end, what happens is the, the emergency, final emergency response thing gets sent off. All these uh, skate pods get jettisoned off. There are lots of like alien life forms on them, so they get like kind of sent all over the place and now there's a real fucking problem when they realize what's going on and that in the basically in the future iterations of the show of, of the movies Ripley takes a back seat Newt joins the colonial marine corps and is now alien killer number one um and is like basically turns into that person who is like this is my mission I am now on like a, a sink and destroy for all this entire species so yeah. it's a reset of, 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 the, of the whole franchise. Do you think there's going to be like a reveal of her parents being more involved with Waylon Yutani? Like that they were instrumental in some of that shit? A hundred percent. I like yeah, that. Yeah, you can do all of that type of fun stuff. But, but that way you're like, you actually have a good close for Ripley that still allows Ripley to come in on the later um, series episodes but as more of that supporting character, and more of like the Stallone character in the Creed movies. Yeah. You know, where it's like Ripley is passing the, the, that character on to Newt, and now Rebecca, uh, I, I, I like the whole thing about at some point in the third movie, she's like, I don't like Newt, my name's Rebecca. You know, it's like, you know, or, or goes by that again. And it's a whole reset for that franchise, and it allows it to branch off in so many other directions. Now, here's the thing. Noah Hawley is doing his own thing with, um, with, with Alien right now that may be amazing. Or um, may not be. Uh, Feder- <laughs> his track record film-wise is not well, great. Federico- no, no, that, that's a show. It's mm. an FX show. Oh, he is doing it as a show. Okay, good, good, good. No, that's his, an FX his show. His TV work is amazing. No, Federico is doing the one that, that's the gotcha. one movie that apparently Ridley Scott says is the best Alien movie since Aliens. So I have no idea about what's going on now. When the aliens, uh, that's the way I would have reset that franchise Love to it. go in a direction that would have made sense to me. Love it. Yeah, I like that too. All right. I, 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 I want to look forward to alien movies like I look forward to other franchises. Yeah. And I really like, haven't had that. I, I well, never saw Covenant. That, the, the, uh, new, the new that, Predators have been great. I'm, I'm waiting for that, a fresh. That, you know. that has a whole lot of other, like, like for example, the whole like hidden plant thing. That's very much Serenity. That's very much a Joss Whedon serenity type of thing where it's like oh they were doing all these experiments on this planet and they wiped it off the face of the earth yeah. um, I mean, I'm borrowing from a, a lot of different properties sure but I I, I think it makes sense like, like in, in the overall context of where that story could have gone and it allows for further development with Hicks and Ripley and Newt um, just killing them off was a yeah bad it was idea. shitty and off screen like yeah just a shitty yeah, like. off screen death Nikki, Wolf, what do you got for us? Well, 
I, I don't have the benefit of staying awake all night for the past 30 years, staring at the ceiling, <laughs> ironing for a different end, my beloved franchise, as prep. So I have a couple quick hits for you. Okay. Uh, Fair. Evil Dead. Love it. I love the specific uh, mythology of the Kandarian demon. Mm -hmm. I love that there are rules, just like there are rules in zombie films, and it's got this infrastructure and this connective tissue, literally, the Necronomicon, that can tie anything together. And so I was really excited uh, for that new walk, you know, the uh, Walking Dead. No. Uh, Evil Dead. Evil Dead. I'm not excited for Walking Dead. No. Uh, ever. And it was a huge letdown for me. Did you see that movie? The I, I have um, not seen the uh, most um, recent. Oh, Ben's. Well, no, I was going to say, I'm really interested in this. I'm going to use the restroom really quick. Okay. No, but. I, well, I have not seen the movie, well, you, you, Nick. You can, you can, he, he can go. He, he can go. No, oh, no. Yeah, I'm letting him go. I'm not telling him he can't go. Did you, <laughs> uh, did you, give, him the bat, you give him the bathroom pass? I locked the door. He can't get back in. All right. Um, all right. So uh, did you watch Ash versus Evil Dead? Yeah, all? I did. Not yeah. all of it, but... I, I, li um, I liked it. I thought it was an interesting, oh, yeah. uh, fun thing. Yeah, I have not seen the newest uh, the newest film, well, but I've heard very I'll, mixed I'll, things. I'll give you... I'll, a lot of people loved it. Um, the thing ben, that, ben liked it. I think. Well, the, the, they have a couple of problems for me, um, and some of them were dumb. Like, I feel like all Kandarian demons should have that milky white deadite eye. Mm -hmm. And they they did a similar eye to, like, the, the 28 Days Later zombie with the red ah. iris. And I'm like, I'm over that eye. I want I want that, you know, that Sam Raimi lifeless, you know, the... the Antonym of the great yes. white shark eye, <laughs> that doll's eye. Doll's uh, eye. You know, <laughs> that's what I want. That's a dumb reason, right? But then another reason is they they had they had this this uh, family dynamic, which could have been interesting to um, explore with the mother being possessed. Yeah, and and going after her kids, which is is kind of dark. But I I, I liked it in concept. <laughs> That my one of my main problems is they cast a very small child to get thrown in the mix, and it, it kept taking me out because I kept thinking about just you know, and, and they didn't lean into it like that's the true horror. If something happened yeah. like this, and you have a, a, a kid, what the fuck do you do? It's hard enough, like just with your buddies in, in a cabin in the woods who are all of age and, and healthy and spry. That's right? what made the movie but, effective. Well, see, it didn't. It, it's exactly what what hurt it for me because I couldn't see it through the uh, through a different. I couldn't see it through the lens in which they wanted me to see it. Um, what I want to do, and maybe this is a dumb idea, but I like, you know, talk about a soft reboot. Talk about, you know, taking it in a different direction. Sam Raimi literally did it with the sequel. What if that cabin, <laughs> it's always the cabin, and it's a different ca It's a different story, it's a different cast. The only thing that ties it together is they're at that cabin. And, and you think about it like like the multiverse, you know, if, 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 if it's just a different cast, it's a different time, it can go as crazy as Army of Darkness. There could be portals. There could be, it, it, it could take you literally anywhere, but it always starts with a group of, of teenagers you don't know that well, and you haven't committed all this time to humanizing as a loving mother and then just throw it fucking away. Um, it's all sort of easily hateable teenagers starting off in that way. And, and Going from there, and that being the friend, it always it's like it's like Fallout. War never changes. That is the same beginning every time, and then then you can go nuts, and there's no needed continuity. Well, I like the idea but of it being different rules. time periods too. Is interesting to me. Sure. If you have like a colonial yeah. Evil Dead, but then you have a modern Evil Dead. Oh yeah, absolutely right. Um, and, and there's different clever ways you keep that cabin in there, but um, yeah, you you keep with the lore, you keep with the rules, you know. And and just go wild each time. Um, another thing, I, I I'm thinking of, I keep seeing Chalamet in that Wonka hat, <laughs> and even though the reviews are good, I just it enrages me <laughs> a little bit. Um, uh, and it, it's since Gene Wilder, you know, I'm just I'm I'm they've not quite scratched my Wonka itch, you know. Um, you going with Johnny the Jeremy Depp Allen was, Miller? <laughs> well. <laughs> it's on the nose. It's so on the nose. I know it looks just like so it on the nose. Um, uh, uh, hey, you, you said I had the Gene Wilder hair. Maybe you do. You, you do. You got a little. You've got. 
Uh, You're a little between Gene Wilder but, and Charlie <laughs> Chaplin, as played by uh, Robert Downey Jr. I'll take it. Uh, did you watch any of the Wes Anderson short films on Netflix? No. I am not yet. So uh, Wes did four short films, the same rotating cast. Yeah, ben yeah. Kingsley, Cumberbatch, uh, Depp Patel. Uh, who am I missing? Uh, a couple of the great, great actors, right? No. Oh, I know. But um, right. Jeffrey Wright. I think is in some of those. Yeah, Maybe not. I think Jeffrey Ryan. Yeah. I think he is. Ralph Ralph Fiennes. Um, anyway, they're really good, and, and he adapted the lesser known short fiction. Uh, Gene would have also been a good choice to direct these. They're about fifteen minutes each, and they're very good. Um, I want Wes Anderson's Rolled Doll Universe. If we're gonna redo Wonka, give it to Wes. He already did Fantastic Mr. Fox. He's done some great adaptions, but he's never done the big hit. I, I, I want to see a Wes Anderson, The Witches, yeah. so fucking bad. So fucking bad. Um, and I want it all to connect, and I want it all to live in the same world, which I believe is I, – yeah. I believe Roald Dahl did approach it Some of way. his stuff positive. is connected. Not all of it, but um, yes. Yeah, the, the, the short work usually is, but I, what I would do is I would connect everything. Everything from Uncle Oswald, the debaucherous adult – Full fiction to his shorts to, to bring. I want to see Boy, uh, I, his biography also done, but like tying into the Wonka verse as well as like a framework. You could do. You could actually sure. make that your your overarching thing through all of these properties. You get a little bit more of Boy and the childhood story as you're telling each of these other tales. Yeah, and I mean, I, I, I want to see Wes Anderson's uh, BFG. Yeah, you know, I want to see. All I was of very it. disappointed with Spielberg's BFG. Yeah, Except for Bill I, Hader, who is one. I, I I remember loving loving that uh, loving that that book. It's my favorite um, Raw Doll, the hands down. It's really it's really quite good. Um, but yeah. but even you know m- maybe maybe we even I mean it would be crazy. It would be absolutely crazy to remake a stop motion film, <laughs> James and the Giant Peach, with another stop motion film. But I, I imagine anything that's too fantasy, Wes will do in his stop in his patented stop motion. And anything that he can connect yeah. would be live action. Um, the Twits, remember the Twits? Yeah, yeah. great. One. That was that would be fucking hilarious. Um, but anyway, uh, and then my my last thing is while I loved the new Turtles and I love the direction um, that they're taking it, um, I miss that live action turtle. I I always find myself going back to the new line. You know, the first movie with him interacting with, with people. And, <laughs> tell, tell me, I like turtles. <laughs> uh, I, I love him. turtles. I like them live action turtles where I can touch them. <laughs> so, so I think I, I, I want to scratch that stop motion, that, that, that stop motion, that, that uh, live action itch. But I love what they did in casting real teenagers and they played that up in all the promotional stuff. But it's true. It made a tangible effect on the enjoyability factor of that film. So here and here is it, please don't no one uh, could ever accuse me of not paying off something I set off. Um, but here's my second She-Hulk. I'll accuse you. Oh, well, here we go. Yeah. Um, I, I, I'm not going to check off gun the She-Hulk reference, but do it sort of like how they did it. The people are in space, not in a mocap room in a tiny box, but in Real environments with stop motion um, suits, not stop motion, mocap suit, suits, right? Which is how, so that you how allow... Bay did it. What? That's how Michael Bay did it. Yes, uh, but he did them with adults. Yes. And I don't think that the actors were the voices. I'm, I'm saying the actors are real teenagers, gotcha. and they are both acting and the voices of their characters acting in real space with humans. So kind of taking, kind of merging the live action world with the animation world. Cause for me, uh, and as an animation fan, I mean, I was rewatching into the spider verse and God damn it. These movies are so good. I'll never, I'll never watch like super Mario and be like, Oh, what great animation. Like animation is yeah. ruined for me. I expect a lot out of animation. And while Ninja Turtles had some really interesting contributions and made their own mark in the style and the animation, um, 
I don't know if it's necessarily the right property for it. It's almost like we're trying to do too much. Is it- you know, they don't move like Spider Man swinging around. They don't need that frenetic energy every shot. I want to see live action feeling turtles. As the and I as think the, the way to do that is mocap. As the producer, you're pitching this to. I am going to say something the actual producer would never say, which is, <laughs> can we not do the the suits? Can we not just do the foam I mean, suits? And, but but, here, but make them different sizes so that they're not all just the same turtle with a mask on. Like there's I'm into a it. difference I'm into to it. their and, and, body and, and, types. I'm into it, and I think and I think puppetry has evolved to the point where you could do it convincingly with a little or, extra tender love and care. But you or the have addition kids. of the CG on top of the Your, the child the child labor laws aren't going to let a 15 year old inside that suit for you know 10 hours a day. So I think you got to kind of choose. Do you want uh, authentic? teenage cast or do you want puppet suits have you been seeing my google history i'm always looking for authentic teenage <laughs> well it doesn't say cast but it's similar uh, it's um, very similar no that's uh, authentic certain. teenage yeah. casting couch that oh yes uh, that, that's that's much more accurate it's, no. it's great P- puppet suit Pu- puppet suit puppet suit <laughs> <laughs> Need a foam puppet suit. Yeah, I, I, I miss. I am, will forever miss. You know, tactile, real things out there, and I love those those turtle designs. Other, the only thing that's bothering me in every iteration of all turtles is that they are all the same fucking body, which makes no sense to me. Like the turtles yeah. should be like normal creatures, even though they're abnormal. And that there's like one's tall and one's short and one's okay, fat and okay, one's okay. thin. B- big question. Big question. Yeah. Does Raphael have the full headscarf in this, and does Donatello wear glasses? I like the glasses. I don't love the full headscarf. You know, that's almost the opposite is the universal fan response. <laughs> the fans hate that the smart one has to have glasses, and they think that it's it's stupid, but I, I love it. I love glasses. And I also, but, but I, I also like, love but the But I like full, the Jirai? I love the Jirai. I love it. I think, I think you know, I love, I love, I love it. But I, and but the, the, the funny thing is, and you talk about Bay, I'm pretty sure Bay was the first person to do that. And then they continued it in Rise. They continued it in I will, Rogan's. I'll tell you what you do. Raph, made it canon. Raph wears the fucking glasses, and Donatello wears the do-rag, and <laughs> oh, now we break on. the stereotypes. Well, first of all, one of them should be sight impaired, because that exists in the real world. It doesn't have to be the nerdy one. It could be Leonardo. It could be Michelangelo. As a, as a, as it could be Raphael. As a spectacled gentleman, I like to see representation. Yeah, it's it true. could be. It, why does it have to be him, and why can't Donatello have a do-rag? Because nerds wear glasses, nerd. <laughs> Right. Anyway, <laughs> so I've got I've got nine minutes to get this terrible pitch out. So uh, I like it, Nick. I, luck, I think, buddy. but I just I want puppet. I want puppets. I don't need you more want, CGI. You want fifteen year olds in puppet suits? Got I, it. I, I right, want. Fuck the child labor laws. The strike is over. Get those kids in those fucking suits and tell them their yeah, lunches in two hours. Get, get, give it them puppet kids. <laughs> get them on set. That's right. Nice. Get those goddamn teenagers back in their suits. They got oh, two more oh, hours. Actually, actually, I do have one more thing I gotta, I gotta mention as, as a non secretor here. Uh, I, I went to an event the other day that you two would have fucking loved for friend of the podcast, uh, Mike Morani's birthday. We went to Brian Henson's Puppet Up. Have you heard about this? Yeah, yeah. You do? Yeah. I, I'd never heard of it. I didn't know it was yeah. real. Uh, I did it, and it was fucking great. Uh, the conceit is it's basically they followed the Henson method of puppetry, which is they're not performing to an audience. They're performing to a camera. So they had two giant screens and a camera in the middle of the stage and then a, a rotating cast of like, you know, whose line is it anyway, comedian slash puppeteers called up. You would yell out prompts and then they would have it on the screen in real time. And I, I always oh, struggled I with so improv. Bad. <laughs> I mean, dude, I, I, thought, I thought of you the whole time, truly. Um, but like it, I, I, have, I have like a love-hate relationship with improv. I liked Human sure. Giant when I saw that at Upright Citizen Brigade when I first moved to Hollywood, but like I lucked out. That was Aziz and Rob Hoyble and Paul Shear, and like you don't get that no. lineup anymore. But like bad improv hurts my soul, and I, I, I like I get this thing where I get self conscious, and even stand up comedy to to an extent. Like I feel pressure to laugh and engage when I'm not having fun. I don't genuinely don't like it. Yeah, uh, but when you have it, 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 and then I bring back another Spider Verse analogy, right? You don't have to like Spider Man to watch that film and and appreciate it for the artistry. Sure. So even when the improv is bad, you're watching people do it through puppets, which I'm I'm in. So anything that doesn't land 
yeah. still kind of lands if you were brought up with the Muppets and it was like, you know, totally raunchy and I'm so jealous of this. Little off the wall. Uh, you I'm would so absolutely love it. And apparently they don't they do it. It was on the Jim Henson lot too, which I had ne- I've never been on. Um it was a chaplain lot too. I, uh, I have watched not. at least three times since it started making the rounds again since Thanksgiving. The oh, Emmett no Otter, the Emmett Otter blooper reels. Uh, like <laughs> I, the, my love for just Muppet fuckery yeah. is uh, yeah. is. Uh, in fact, that is my <laughs> reboot. As my reboot, it's called Muppet fuckery. <laughs> yeah, um, right. It is. A, it's an all. <laughs> no, no. Uh, all right. So this yeah, is. A, sorry for getting you off. No, no. Uh, 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 all right. So. <laughs> Right, Ben's Ben's done. No, uh, no, I was ready. just gonna say I, I, I knew that Matt's trying to wrap it up, so I'm like, uh, um. right, so my my pitch is, um, I want to I want to take this to TV. I want to pull it from the film. Uh, they've talked about rebooting this a, 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 as a film uh, many many times. Nothing ever quite happens, but it Matt, is the franchise. It's the franchise of the Monster Squad, and yes! what I really want to do with this also is I want to fix what they've tried to do with the Universal Monsters, and I want to do it via the vehicle of the Monster Squad we as a TV about series. You stole my idea. You no, we, we talked about doing a sequel to it. This is not a sequel. No, this um, is not this what is we discussed. This is different. This is t- different. I, I took You're the... You're stealing my idea. I did. I did. I went a different path. So... I'm, uh, we're all kids uh, that grew up in the 80s. Um, uh, Part of why we like things like Stranger Things is that nostalgia factor. And I think that's what Monster Squad feeds into as well. And so for me, I want to envision Monster Squad as a, you know, a five or six season series, probably 10 episode uh, max um, uh, episodes per season. And I think the first season is is very 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 hyper focused on our group of kids. I want to I want to really delve into them before we really get into a lot of what's going to happen with the monster mythology, which I kind of have an idea for that as well. But I like the idea that they're they're uh, what the Monster Squad did as well that I loved is that you had a cool bad boy kid and you had a like it wasn't just like misfits it wasn't like only that i like that there was a diversity to the people involved the kids that were there and i want to do that with this you have enough people that you can do let's say we have eight stranger things really is just monster squad i'm only it's, just now realizing it's it. a close but but a little different and no, and, 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 and and here's because i kind of want to i want to also make this a little bit more personal in a way for for some of them so the idea i have is that they are um, does one of them play metallica on a roof <laughs> Shit. <laughs> it's been done. No. Um I the idea is that they work they're um like they work for like an A V offshoot that does like the morning announcement video stuff, but they're they're um they hunt for unexplained things, kind of like an X Files group. They 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 they're always researching strange and happenings stuff. and things that they they are not explained that always turn out to be something dumb. It's like it, it's just someone that was setting off fireworks or it was a dog or it was like they they don't know. But they've they've been hot on the trail of this a creature that people keep talking about seeing in this town. And then they then there's wildly different descriptions of what this creature is. Is it is it an animal? Is it whatever? And the head of their group is uh is a, a female teacher there that was a former uh a journalist. She was a, a reporter, news reporter. She's now kind of settled down in this town, and she's she's working with them and kind April of April O'Neil. Exactly correct. Um, and <laughs> and the creature is a turtle uh, in a in a foam suit. Um, so they're on the, they, they and they the sightings of this creature seem to only happen, oddly enough, it, it's not often. It's almost like it's happening maybe once a month. But there's we can't figure out why it's only happening kind of so sporadically. And um, it's they, a woman. It's a woman. That's correct. <laughs> um, so the the teach the idea is that the season is going to build up to the fact that the, the it, it is a it's the it's the wolf man, but it's going to be a wolf woman, which is going to be the teacher, and she doesn't know what's happening to her. Meanwhile, they've also they're working with as great as Stranger Things did it. I want to do almost a similar thing, but with a different twist they're working with their science teacher as well at the school to kind of figure out what is this creature is it a biological thing is it something that they they can explain the teacher arc is going to go a lot darker because i really want the teacher to be the dr frankenstein that's going to set off this whole universe but we don't see any of that until literally the very end of season one you think that the big reveal is going to be her and that that she's the wolf man and then he's going to say, you know what, I I think we can work on figuring out how to fix this, how to make this so you don't have these these things on there. And it's going to be his attempts to 
figure out how to fix her her wolf stuff that's going to open up all of the other universal monsters to start to come out season by season. Um, so a little bit of Buffy in there, a little bit of not necessarily monster of the week, but having this these kind of rotating things. I like the idea that Dr. Frankenstein also becomes the invisible man at one point. Like I, I like that he is literally a mad scientist that is trying all of this shit ostensibly based well, on the idea that he wants to fix her. What about this? Um, the... I, I, I love this idea, by the way. I, I, I just want to throw this out there. Before he even creates, Dr. Frankenstein creates his own monster, he reanimates the, mon- the mummy. Oh, yeah. yeah I, I, like, I, that, that I, happens yeah. first. I, I, yeah, that, so the, the part I haven't mapped completely out, I made my list of like the monsters I want to see yeah. up here. I want to go deep dive on some of them. I want kind of the Phantom of the Opera and the Hunchback and like some of the, like, the old school catalog of those monsters. I think we can also absolutely have a, 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 a Bride of Frankenstein that can be his whole drive as well as that he's been working in a way to yeah. reanimate his dead wife. You know, all of these things that, that come out of it, but he is going to very much collapse under the weight of this opportunity. He's He's got this, and, and he's got this woman that he can experiment on. He knows that there's at least one fantastical creature out there. What else might exist? And he uses the kids. The kids think that he, he's a helper, but he's actually using them to find all of this stuff out there because they're really good at it. And, and then the... Uh the Monster Squad grows older and they become the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. That's, and, then, and, well, see, and with, with, yes. I would, I would, I would have it like the, the American military is like, it's, it's under wraps, but they've like heard things and, and uh, General Raymond Mills is trying to find these creatures and you find out uh, that the monsters are Frankenberry, Fruit Fruit, Yummy Mummy. I know. And, 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 and General Mills will stop at nothing to bring them together. First of all, much better than my idea. Uh, <laughs> I'm saddened and hurt that I did not think of the same thing. Um, you, somebody you is not, and General Mills up. is played by Brian Cox. Uh, uh, course, I will not accept course. anyone else. <laughs> Somebody's going to listen to this podcast and be like, God damn it, they're on to something. <laughs> Give me like, General Mills on the phone. Even better is that the, there's, this has already been in plans and someone's listening to the podcast like, God damn Damn it, they're going to get out that's, first. we got to get it first. <laughs> Guys, buy up Captain Crunch. We'll make a pirate movie. It'll be like Jack Sparrow, but less cancelable. The Monster Serial Squad. Sir, this is an IP that's been established for 64 years. <laughs> <laughs> but Serial is S-E-R-I. Exactly. <laughs> oh, shit. That's wonderful. I will watch all of these properties uh, for sure. No, but- I, I, I honestly think that's a really, really really fun way to attack both monster squad and just the the universal monsters and and I, for me this is like a, this is a disney plus for the family like this is not we, we don't need to go even as hard as fucking monster squad went which was a little rough it for went our age hard. went really hard i don't need that necessarily i i like making a family property that is something that like it, that kids can watch with their parents that they that is enjoyable for everybody uh, as long as you still have that. My name <laughs> is Horace. I can get away with no, that. No. We can probably say Nards. I, I think that we, we Disney's loosened no, up no. on some of this. No, 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 gonna, no. It's well, 2023. We're going to say ball. Well, That's because it. it's Wolf Woman, he's going to have to say Wolf Woman got tits. Got twat. <laughs> 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 and now we, oh, you know what, Ben? I just saw it. I've got our poster. It's a, a riff on Got Milk, and it just says Got Twat. And Monster Squad 2025. <laughs> It's a, it's a very hairy, very hairy. Very hairy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Uh, well, we managed to breeze through our topic in like 20 minutes and bullshit for the rest of the podcast. Not a bad but thing. we did it. Not but a bad not, thing. Not a, not, a, not a bad recording uh, altogether. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed hearing us <laughs> shoot the shit about this. We're going to try to get maybe one or two more episodes out before the new year and then lots in store for what we're going to do next year and, and keep bringing back some of our. This is, I think, the most new people we've had in a season, if we call each year a season of the new way, uh, that we've ever really had. Uh, introduced quite a new few new faces. Uh, people seem know, to like the vampires. What, Matt? And you know what, Matt? I, I'm going to say it. Uh-huh. I'm going to say it. If you're a listener of the podcast, why not, why not give us a review? Why not give us a five-star review? Yeah. Maybe, maybe sure. now's the time. You know? <laughs> Nick, have you given us a review? Uh, can, can you? Play? Yeah, I have. Are you sure? Yeah, I had a review. I last time I checked, 
<laughs> I ben, think Ben well, and I my think, brother and me, I think we're and my mom who gave us the four out of five stars. Four, four out of five stars. <laughs> I mean, so if you're a listener, how about giving us a five star review? Or and, mom, and or you, mom, maybe I'll steal your phone when I'm there in uh, two weeks and uh, edit your review and say, oh, "Boy, was I wrong." Uh, 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 this is they yeah, have definitely please. earned that next star because it's the one thing killing our rating. It's my own he, he goddamn lost. mother. <laughs> she and not only lost. it's not even like it was a just a review that you can't tell. She's like, "Well, I'm a little biased because I'm <laughs> I'm I'm the mother, and I feel these other two people are like my sons." But four stars. <laughs> <laughs> Even the Boston okay. guy that reviews things does the f- five stars. It's because uh, we curse, right? Is that, is that the, the star she took off? I think for she just hit the, like I think notes? her finger just hit the thing and she just put it. I don't think she meant to give it four, but oh the God. irony of how funny that review is as a four star is fantastic. Well, so, maybe that could be a Christmas present a, 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 for the holidays. Give us a five star review. Uh, as if I, you're, if you're a, yeah, well, why I, I will have to update her phone and everything <laughs> when I'm out there. So while I'm in there, I may just happen to float on. On over to the have, podcast yeah. app and maybe my finger slips and gives us five stars and for our patreon members uh <laughs> we're doing patrick's drinking game live it, what you didn't see this episode was every time we we uh we fulfill one of those uh one of those rules we take off an article of clothing and yeah. we're all completely naked well and, and what's funny and i was gonna just say that's why we've added more females to the podcast this year is uh now our our patreon only fans of but, the new way it features a lot of female nudity yeah well, no, no I'm you know only just females because we're, too, right? we're the men are the only one that adhere to the rules, so they just stay clothed and we yeah we, we need clothes. <laughs> it's, it's real uncomfortable for everyone. Yeah, it's really uncomfortable. <laughs> it's no, there are men no on OnlyFans. No, why? I don't. I don't make a lot, but I can pay like my gas bill every month. <laughs> <laughs> who's, who's paying for for what they get for free? I don't understand. There's a there's a plethora of dick pics floating out in the ether. Ready for anyone to snap up at any moment. But no identifying marks. Oh, is that a thing? Shit. Oh, yeah, AI, AI's like... got my dick. Damn it. Yeah. AI's got your dick, bro. <laughs> That's, that should be the warning poster. <laughs> AI's got your dick. Better stop it now before it gets more. All right. Anyway, you, you wouldn't you wouldn't steal a dick. <laughs> so <that's, laughs> what? Go, Ben. We promise we'll get around to more erotic readings later. Yes. M- we, m- we, when we have another, uh, when we have Ryan on again, we will do more erotic readings, uh, maybe, as always. Maybe like, um, like Harry Twanner and the Jizner of Askaman or something like that. I have no idea. The Jizner. <laughs> wow. <laughs> really? Boy, we went so highbrow at the end of the no episode. Idea. It was great. Anyway, thank you so much for listening, and we'll talk to you next time. Cheers. Cheers. Uh,